Chapter 10 Kriya Yoga in the Vision of Swami Hariharananda This particular form of Kriya has a structure similar to Lahari's but it gives not so much weight to the action on the heart chakra. At a certain point it seems to transcend the spine with its chakras and take refuge at the top, at the upper part of the head. I find it not powerful but, with some intelligent choice, coupling it, as much as possible, with Lahari's Kriya, it can guide you in a dimension of unspeakable beauty. Swami Hariharananda explained us that the Omkar reality reveals to us as sound, light and movement sensation. This was to me a great revelation. I am thankful for what I have learned at the feet of this teacher. In the following techniques the tongue is in the position of baby kechari mudra. First Kriya First Kriya routine Maha mudra in two parts, forward bendings and Maha mudra proper. Kriya pranayam Jyoti mudra Parvastha Maha mudra in two parts, forward bendings and Maha mudra proper. In this school Maha mudra is given with unsurpassed care, making Omkar realization almost tangible even to a beginner. This Maha mudra is divided into two parts, the forward bendings and Maha mudra proper. Forward bendings Sit on the pavement in the half lotus position or on the heels. Exhale Concentrate on Agya in the center of your head. Through a deep inhalation, not too long, visualize the breath coming from the physical location of Muladhara of the spine until you complete the breath at Agya. Hold your breath. Bend at the waist and preferably touch the floor with your head. The head is placed in the region between the knees. Use your hands freely in order to achieve this position comfortably. Gently breathe out and let the breath free. After touching the forehead to the floor, twist first to the right, nearing the right ear lobe to the right knee. The head comes near the right knee. The face is turned toward the left knee so that it is possible to perceive a pressure on the right side of the head. A sensation of space is perceived inside the left side of the brain. Remain in this position for 3 to 30 seconds. Move head back to center until forehead touches ground. Then repeat the same exercise with the other side of your body, reversing the perceptions. Move your head until your left ear is directly over the left knee. Try to experience internal pressure in the left side of your head. A sensation of space is perceived inside the right side of the brain. Remain in this position for 3 to 30 seconds. Then the head is placed in the region between the knees again, the face turned downward. During this delicate process you are breathing normally and your awareness is mainly at Agya while your eyes are focused on Kutistha. Then sit up straight, inhaling deeply. Through a long exhalation let the energy go down from Agya to Muladhara. Through a deep inhalation visualize the breath coming from the physical location of Swadhisthana of the spine until you complete the breath at Agya. Repeat all the previous process just as we have done for Muladhara. At the end through a long exhalation you guide the energy from Agya to Swadhisthana. Then repeat the same process for Manipura, Anahata, Vishuddha and Medulla. In this way you will enjoy six bows. Note. To increase the power of this procedure, you can hold your breath when you are down. You will get a very strong sensation of energy rising up and intensifying in the point between your eyebrows. Breath retention is a powerful kundalini stimulator. If you are not ready for the power generated by this procedure, if you feel like spaced out after your meditation or if you feel too much irritable, don't hold your breath. When you bend your body left, your right nostril will open. When you bend your body right, your left nostril will open. When you bend your body in the front, you get equal pressure of flow of breath inside your nostrils. You get balance of the mind and calmness in your body. Your spinal cord passage will open. The lunar channel of ID is situated at the left side of the spine. The solar channel of Pingla is situated at the right side of the spine. Both cords cling to each other. By repeating the previous procedure, they are separated and, as a consequence, 
and hollow passage is opened between the two the opening of the spiritual passage within the spine sushumna is the starting point of the practice of meditation maha mudra bend the left leg under the body so the left heel is near to the perineum draw the right knee against the body so the thigh is as close to the chest as possible the interlocked fingers are placed just below knee applying pressure to your internal organs take 5 to 6 very deep breaths with moderate pressure applied to knee then inhale deep and hold extend the right leg bow down breath normally and massage the right leg from the foot to the thigh and hip then grasp the right foot in this way the right hand grabs the right toes while the left hand grabs the inner side of the middle part of the right foot the arch of the foot the face is turned to the left you perceive a sensation like an inner pressure on the right side of the head it contrasts with the free space sensation in the left side of the brain chant om 6 times in the point between your eyebrows then inhale and hold sit back up onto your left foot with right knee folded into your chest then exhale into normal conscious breathing practice the whole procedure by reversing the perceptions and the position of the legs i won't repeat everything don't forget the chant of om 6 times in the point between your eyebrows now draw both knees against your body extend both legs bow down breath normally and massage both legs from feet to thighs and hips then grasp both feet right hand to right toes left hand to left toes breathe normally flex feet 4 or 5 times then relax with the head down as near to knees as possible experience internal pressure on the front part of the head a sensation of space is perceived inside the occipital region chant om 6 times in the point between your eyebrows then inhale sit up and hold massage briefly toes fold legs back to chest and exhale as usual this exercise is repeated 3 times kriya pranayam with eyes closed deeply inhale into fontanelle then exhale into agya dot hold breath for few seconds 3 to 4 then inhale up to fontanelle hold your breath for few seconds then exhale to vishuddha hold for a few seconds then inhale to fontanelle hold your breath for few seconds then exhale to anatha and so on at a certain point you have reached the muladhara hold your breath for few seconds then inhale to fontanelle now repeat in reverse our order exhale down from fontanelle to muladhara hold your breath for few seconds then inhale to fontanelle hold your breath then exhale down to swadhisthana chakra pause inhale and so on until you exhale down from fontanelle to agya this is one cycle 12 breaths you can repeat the whole cycle for a couple of times during the pause between inhalation and exhalation the awareness is in fontanelle the breath should be held to 2 3 seconds but after several weeks of pranayam the time of each pause can be gradually increased up to 30 seconds this detail is very important to create a deeper calmness now then this flute sound is one thing and the astral sounds is another thing however a long concentration upon the flute like sound is the best action to listen to the internal astral sounds these sounds come from the activity of the chakras a great experience is hearing a distant sound of a long sustaining bell the sound of anatha the experience of the bell changes into the sound of many waters This is the real sound of Om that guides the soul to travel through the spine, contacting the divine light in the upper part of the head. Lahiri Mahashe described it as a sound produced by a lot of people continually striking the disc of a bell and as continuous as all flowing out of a container. Surely, when you hear the sound of running waters or of waves breaking over cliffs, you can be sure you are on the right track. Modesty is always welcome but when this result is achieved the positive euphoria is so overwhelming that it cannot be contained like finding Aladdin's magic lamp In Kriya literature it is said that those who realize a perfect pranayam can achieve everything through it Well 
If we dream of a faultless Kriya Pranayam, then what we have described matches the ideal of perfection. A very important fact to understand is that the event of perceiving these sounds is not produced by the intensity of a unique moment of deep concentration but by the accumulation of effort manifested during daily sessions of Kriya. Effort is the meticulous attention to any internal sound, no matter how faint. What is essential is to bring ahead a continuous will to listen internally. Each chanting of the syllable Om should be accompanied by an unswerving will to track down the echo of this vibration until you become aware of the astral sounds. Your listening skills will improve. Those who are not able to hear any internal sound should not conclude something is wrong. Maybe they have done an enormous effort whose fruits will be enjoyed during the next day's practice or some day in the future.